How's it going guys? It's Amazing Animal Adventures and it's two days until Christmas. So to celebrate, we're going to learn about co-dominant morphs. Okay, co-dominant morphs don't have anything to do with Christmas, but we're going to learn about them anyway. Get ready for episode three of an introduction to snake morphs. So today, you guys, is Sheila's Day to Shine, because Sheila, my beautiful ball python here, is a pastel, which is a codominant morph. Now, codominant morphs are really interesting. They act like a dominant morph most of the time, but in certain circumstances, they have blending properties, which we'll get into. For example, in episode one of this series, we used pastel as an example when we were talking about just the basics of Punnett squares and morphs. And you could see, if you go back and watch that Punnett square, compare that to the Punnett square we did in episode 2 of the dominant spider morph, you'll see very, very similar. There wasn't any differences when you're just dealing with single genes. And that's how it is with most codominant morphs. So to refresh your memory, let's go ahead and look at Pastel's single gene in a Punnett square. So here, as always, we have our two parents. Go ahead and align them on the Punnett square. Just like we always do, we drag everything down make four different genotypes, determining their phenotypes as 50% pastel and 50% normal. This is how all codominant morphs will work on a single gene level. So that's how codoms work in single gene morphs. It's pretty straightforward, exactly like dominant. The water starts to get a little bit muddy when you start getting into double gene morphs. Okay, here we go. Here's our two parents and their two genotypes. For this specific trait, PN and PN. So we're just doing a pastel to a pastel. Here are our parents put onto the Punnett square. In our first box, we see we have PP. We haven't seen this before, and we'll discuss it after we fill out the rest of the box. Next, we have PN, which we know is a pastel. And another PN, pastel. And the ever familiar NN, which is just a normal. So, we just got to look at this PP genotype. What does this mean? What is its phenotype or its physical appearance? So, when we went over the dominant morphs, we ended up with an SS on the spider, which was just basically two spider genes. All this meant was that that spider would always pass on a spider gene to any of its offspring. But it still just looked like a normal spider. There was no way of determining it was that SS gene unless you were to look at its offspring. Now, remember I talked about codominant genes having that blending property. This is where that comes in. We have that PP gene, and that's basically the two layers of the pastel, just like we had two layers of the spider in the SS. Now, stay with me here, I know this is involved, but this is where it gets different from the spider gene. The spider gene looked the same, right? Well, this does not. This does not look like a normal pastel. It's what we call a super pastel, because it's two pastel genes. Whereas a normal pastel looks something like this, a super pastel looks like this. So all that means is that in all codominant morphs you can overlay that gene twice and it'll become a super, which is different than just a single. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of an introduction to snake morphs. And uh, we'll be back next week with recessive genes, which will be the hardest we've done yet. <laughs>